Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. We are now rapidly approaching the end of June and what a month it has been. The mean central England temperature provisionally to the 25th is 17.1 Celsius. That's a huge three degrees above the long term average. Now, with that said, in recent days, it has started turning more changeable. And I think that sets the general direction of travel for the last few days of the month and the early part of July at least. But without further ado, let's take a look. And the animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 27th. At the outset, the picture being shown just really reinforces what I've been discussing. There is an Atlantic flow covering all regions, outbreaks of rain moving away from the northeast, but in the south it is drier. And I suspect that will often, but not always, be the case as we go through the next two weeks. So running this, disturbances bring showers or long spells of rain at times, particularly to the north and the northwest, but there will be some rain in the south, the southeast amounts are uncertain. Into the weekend, and a couple of things of note. Firstly, there is more of a northwesterly tilt to the flow, therefore it's not particularly warm. Also, the isobars are packed closely together, which means that on some days at least, it will be windy for the time of the year. Going through to the conclusion here, and the Atlantic stays in charge of things, so it's not particularly settled at any point. By the very end of the first week, there is a nasty area of low pressure starting to approach from the west, and by this stage the details are uncertain of course, but it would have the potential to pull up some very warm and humid air ahead of it from the southwest, also to keep things quite unsettled. So definitely it needs watching. The air temperature sequence associated with the same computer model run. Here is the UK and it's under yellow and orange shading to start off with, so that's indicating above the 30 year norm temperatures at about 1500 meters above sea level. As I run the sequence, the cooler greens move across all parts, but particularly the north. The yellows and oranges sometimes return, particularly to the south. So the general theme here is for air temperatures at about 1500 meters to be fluctuating, but for lower values more often than not in the north, the higher ones in the south. What does that mean? in terms of temperatures that we can expect down at the ground level. Just a few charts from the GFS to illustrate the likelihood. Wednesday the 28th, maximum value has been shown here, 24 Celsius in central and eastern England, a little bit lower as you head northwestwards. Moving forward to Friday, it's now cooler everywhere, maximums of around 22 in East Anglia, again lower as you go west and northwest. Overnight lows will be fluctuating, but it could well be quite humid and sticky on some nights, just to illustrate. Saturday morning, these are the overnight lows, 14 or 15 in England and Wales, a few degrees lower in Scotland, but quite humid potentially, as I say, on some nights. Then forwards to Tuesday, back to looking at maximums, 23 or 24 in central and eastern England, a little bit lower there in the northwest, particularly Northern Ireland. But these values are just indicative. They will be fluctuating and the GFS has been a little bit off the mark recently, but they give some idea of what we can expect. Never particularly warm, not, not really particularly cool either. So the south more likely to be above the average and the northwest a little bit below it. But as I say, they will be fluctuating from day to day. The wind strength I've already mentioned, and that's uh, shown here on the Morgrex G ensemble plot. This one is for London. Gust speeds forecast of around 30 miles an hour on the last day of June and perhaps into early July. Most of the runs there showing similar values, so a reasonable degree of consistency. And just taking a look at the same plot, but for Glasgow, it's windier here. Maybe on the 1st of July, Gust speeds exceed in 40 miles an hour, according to most of the runs there in the ensemble. So, as I said, windy for the time of the year. 
especially through the second half of the first week. Rainfall. These charts show forecast accumulations in millimetres for days 0 to 5. The one on the left is from the ECM model, the one on the right, the GFS. Both have the highest values in Western Scotland, but there are significant differences between the two of them, particularly in East Anglia and the southeastern corner, where GFS has a much drier picture than ECM. And that really just flags up some of the uncertainty which I've been talking about in terms of rainfall in southern counties. A couple of charts here, the one on the left from the UKV model, OHGMT, Thursday the 29th, it shows rain and cloud. On the right, it's from the ECM model at 06 GMT, Thursday v 29th, and this one just shows rain. I think the point to make is that they both have quite a wet picture in East Anglia and southeastern England, whereas the GFS doesn't really develop this area of rain as much. So even when looking only a couple of days ahead from the start of a forecast period, there is some uncertainty, and it's often very difficult to pinpoint rain amounts at this time of the year. Going forwards to the 0 to 10 day aggregate charts, values have increased generally across the UK, although GFS keeps those totals low in the southeast in particular. The wettest conditions very much in the west and the northwest, so good agreement about that at least. So, in more general terms, do the deterministic models paint quite a mixed picture towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS, Tuesday, July the 4th. As I've already mentioned, high pressure perhaps having more influence there in the south, keeping things somewhat drier. The Canadian global model, it's a similar story. German ICON, the European ECM, and finally, the UK Met Office. And now there are some differences with this. High pressure perhaps extending its influence further northwards. But taking them collectively, the theme is quite a consistent one. An Atlantic flow, areas of low pressure keeping things mixed, quite changeable or unsettled. Rain amounts greater as you head northwards. The influence of high pressure building up from the south is uncertain. It's, it's quite difficult to pin down the balance between high pressure to the southwest and areas of low pressure moving in from the Atlantic. But with this general pattern, as I've been saying, the driest conditions are more often than not likely to be in southern parts of the UK. So with that rather unsettled end to week one, what happens as we go through week two? As ever, it's just about the trends and the probabilities at this range, and I'll start with a 16-day GEFS ensemble plot for London. Air temperatures across the top, the thick black line is a 30-year norm, and most of the individual runs there are staying very close to it, at least through the first few days. There are one or two which are way above it, so those are ones which are going for much warmer air aloft, but they are in a small minority, so as ever, don't discount the possibility completely, but it's not the favoured solution. Towards the end of the second week, though, the thick purple line is climbing above a thick black line. More of the individual runs are bringing warmer air across the southern part of the UK, so the trend later on is upwards. The rain risk, that's indicated by the number of spikes as we go forwards through time. And there are a few early on, so there is going to be some rain around potentially, but amounts in the south not great, probably as I've been indicating. And later on, their number perhaps starts to reduce. So if anything, the tendency is for the chance of rain to be falling as we go through week two. Two metre temperature data table for London. The trend is for it to be turning warmer later on. This shade of orange dominates to begin with. Those are runs going for maximums of between 21 and 25 Celsius. There's some yellow in there as well, cooler. So probably not too far from the average, just maybe a little bit above it. Later on though, red start to appear in greater numbers, 26 to 30 Celsius. There's even a little bit of pink coming back, those runs going for over 30 degrees. 
Up to Manchester, the air temperature profile is a little bit different. Initially, most of the runs are a few degrees below that 30 year average. Later on, though, they are climbing, so the same general pattern, just albeit at a somewhat lower level. The rain risk, though, is ongoing. There are distinctly more spikes on this chart than there were on the London one. So a good chance of rain on a number of days through the second week. The two metre temperature data table for Manchester follows the same trend as the London one did, albeit at a slightly lower level again, but it's warming up towards the end there. Up to Glasgow to see the view in the northwest, the air temperature part very similar to the Manchester plot, and also the rain risk is ongoing. This looks like the wettest of the three charts from more spikes on this one, more rain spikes than were on the other two. Also, they are a bit taller. The, the height of them indicates the rain rate. So the higher they are, the greater the rain rate being forecast by that individual run at that time. And finally here, the two meter data table, two meter temperature data table for Glasgow. It follows a similar pattern to London and Manchester. So increasing temperatures are being predicted later on, or at least the chance of increasing starts to rise later on. The 10-day ECM ensemble mean surface level pressure plot, so valued on Friday the 7th of July, indicates a slack pressure pattern across the UK, which is just here. But it looks as though there is a trough sitting close to the country, so the chance of showers or even longer spells of rain not out of a question at this point. So quite a changeable theme being suggested by this. The mean surface level pressure data table for York using data from the GEFS model. So this one's going forwards through the second week rather than just being a snapshot of one given time. Points towards pressure starting to rise later on there. The amount of yellow runs which forecast in between 1011 to 1025 millibars grows. Early on it's distinctly tilted towards lower than average pressure, but as I say, the trend is for pressure to be rising through the second week. So to summarize, week one, it's changeable. Showers are longer spells of rain are possible in all regions, but the wettest conditions are likely to be in the north and the west. Temperatures fluctuate, warmest in the southeast and east Anglia, coolest in the northwest. Week two, changeable, particularly early on, but rain amounts in the south probably remain quite small. The chance of warm or very warm conditions increases later, especially in southern counties. So, uh, there we have it. The emphasis for the next two weeks, I think, is very much on mixed rather than hot weather. And of course, that will please some people and disappoint others. Nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please hit the like button below. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And finally, remember that you can keep up to date with the daily weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. So thanks very much now for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye now.